I might be the only person in the world that got really excited about this recent announcement by Webflow. Rich Text Element got an update, an upgrade. It's kind of amazing because I've spent the past one month making videos about how ridiculous this element in Webflow actually is and why there are so many random limitations and bugs with it. But the fixes that they did, they kind of just slid it in there and they present it as small updates. But man, oh man, for me, this is a massive update. Maybe just because I get excited about these tiny little things. But anyways, let's go check it out. Let's see what this thing is all about. And let's learn a little thing or two about the rich text element and why it's so important for Webflow. Let's go. I have here a completely blank Webflow project file just so we can see what the defaults are for this rich text element. Let's just add a container. It's a little bit more pleasing to look at this rich text element when I drop it in. 100 VH, max width of 40 rem. And let's center it. Let's go ahead and drop this brand spanking new rich text element. There it is, rich text element, our hero of the day. It looks kind of the same. I think, but the defaults kind of looks good out of the box. The rich text element, which is what Webflow calls it, but I call it rich text block because that's the name Webflow gives it. So I don't know why it's... Anyways, all that it is, is this unique div, right? That has some functionalities that Webflow has given it. The only thing that it can house are HTML tags. What are HTML tags? These are headings, block quotes, paragraphs, lists, links, and then some embed elements as well. If you click on one of these tags, you can actually go into your style selector and you'll see that select a class or tag is there. People forget that. And then here, the tags are represented with pink chips here. So if you have that selected, that means any H1 heading inside or outside of the rich text element will be inheriting any styles that you have in here. And you can see from a fresh Webflow project file, there are pixel values in here already, which are awful and you should really use a framework so that you don't have to do this every time you start a project. So the rich text element is just that, right? So it's just a bunch of HTML tags in it. Now, one of the great updates that happened is that for some reason in the past, you weren't able to manipulate and interact with the HTML tags inside your rich text block. And if you like deleted one thing, it would delete the entire element. And now we can, you know, manipulate these things, move some stuff around and make the experience a lot better for sure. The other big update that they did is you can just click on anything in here and add a class, let's say text size large on it and you can see it totally works. You know, it just updates that. Before you were only able to style these HTML tags through a process called nesting. And nesting is totally different than applying a class directly into an object. So let's take a look at the rich text element and there's a couple of things to know. First, every single line that you create, right? If I'm just doing this, what's actually happening is you're writing empty paragraph tags inside of this rich text element and I can prove it and show it to you. So now you can see here, you can select all these empty paragraph tags in here, right? So any actions you perform or anything that you make inside of this rich text element, it's basically creating that tag inside of here. So the next time you wanna create some extra space, you hit enter. Where's this height coming from? How do I control this height? Right here, you can see in the size, the height is just set to auto. So what's creating this height? There's a few things in CSS, which is kind of what all this stuff on the right side is, that adds height to a particular element. Element, right? And so the first one is the fact of margin. So margin adds height to an element. So if I increase the margin on here, now our paragraph tag is that. The second thing that adds height is the line height. And so if we start zeroing out all of these things, you'll see that everything will kind of collapse and we'll lose all of our height. Hey, so I hope you're finding some value in this video. If you want some bi-weekly free resources, inspiration, and quick wisdom from my 12 years of running this full service agency, click the link below and subscribe to my newsletter. We're talking about getting quality, no BS content and how you can apply it to your work and life. All free, it's all curated by me. These are things that I actually use. I won't clog your inbox just every other week, a nice little surprise in your email.
back to the video. If for some reason you're finding yourself hitting enter twice or hitting enter once even because you like to have that space in between your elements, well, what you really should be doing is manipulating the top and bottom margins of your paragraph tag, okay? Instead of inserting empty paragraph tags because paragraph tags are for paragraphs. And so if we just say all paragraph that's nested inside of my rich text, I just want that to always have, let's say 1.5 rems. And then now everything will always have that space and you can go ahead and get rid of these empty paragraph tags, making everything a lot cleaner. The next thing to note are the text formatting options and how that works. Now this is actually really powerful and something I feel like a lot of people don't use often. We'll talk about how to really leverage this thing. When I have something selected here, the first four items in this tooltip are formatting options. So these are HTML tags. They are specifically for formatting text. The rich text element treats them completely differently. Why are they different? What is different about them? Why should we even care about it? The first thing is with the rich text element, every line like we see here is an HTML tag. And it's a thing that you can't nest headings inside of each each other. When you work with these text formatting options here, what's actually happening is that one gets nested inside of your heading tag. So you can see that italic text is now a child of your heading tag. This matters because when we're in here, let's highlight it again. If I want to change my HTML tag to let's say an H3, it retains that text formatting option. So the other thing that you can do with this formatting option is you can have parts of your tags formatted differently. So let's do a superscript here, right? And in the navigator, what essentially has happened is you now have the superscript and you have this italic text. You can then of course select and style these things accordingly. Unfortunately, you can't like nest it inside of heading one. You can only nest it inside of your parent rich text element. Because of Webflow's recent update, you are able to nest this formatting option just so that you inherit style only if it's inside of this rich text element with this new update, which is kind of awesome. You can apply a class directly to this. So I can just say text color red, and then we can now swap this out to red. So the problem here is that if I want to make this italics, it's not gonna turn red. It's because it doesn't have the class of text color red. If you are in the editor view, this class here isn't really that helpful for you. If you wanted to replicate this in the editor, you're not really able to because you need to be in the designer view to add these classes to it. If you wanted to style your italics thread, then what you need to do is you need to still use nesting, unfortunately. Now it's all nested, and if I swap this over to red, if I go into my H2 and I hit italics, that will also turn red. So as an editor, I'm able to now replicate what's going on in here. Now, as far as targeting goes, you are able to apply a custom class on these things now based on the recent update, but you can't like move stuff around. So this is functioning similar to how the rich text element used to be. If I delete any of these text formatting options, it'll delete the entire tag itself. So you can see here, if I delete that, it'll delete everything. So if you need to remove the italics, you have to go through it this way. Otherwise it will delete everything. Now let's take a look at other HTML tags that you can add to your rich text element. If we hit enter here and there's this plus icon, you'll see that there's some HTML tags in here. We have an image, a video, an HTML embed, a rich media embed, and then two types of list, unordered and ordered. So bullet points versus numerical or alphabetical. The first thing that you need to know is that the image, the video, as well as the rich media embed are all similar because they're contained within a figure tag. Why is that important to know? Well, let's drop an image in so you, I can kind of show you. Let me upload another image actually. So let me upload another image, but this time I'm going to upload a wider image, okay? So here I have two images. One is about 380 pixels wide and the other one is 875 pixels wide. What the hell is going on? Why are they the same size? Webflow by default applies a 60% max width on these images. Why 60%? I have no idea. I guess it kind of looks nice. But not only that, they're also adding a margin auto on this. When you have a set 
width like 60% and you have your left and right margin set to auto that will center an element. What happens if we want this element to be edge to edge, which is what this icon seems to be showing us. If I select that on my small, absolutely nothing happens. That's because this asset has reached its maximum width. If we go into our wide guy here and I select this, we're now able to extend edge to edge. So all that's really happening with making this edge to edge is you're swapping Webflow's default max width 60%, which is this, to a max width of 100%. So it's just stretching it in that way. A couple other options in here is the left align. Now what's happening with the left align? How are they doing that? It's reverting back that max width of 60% and keeping the margin auto on the right side, margin zero on the left side. Now let's take a look at this one. Your image is on the left side and then the content below your image, and this is super important, below your image will float to the right side. Now, why is that important? Well, in most like Word documents and things like that, you might mistake this for something called text wrapping, where as you're typing, things just kind of magically wrap around the element. Well, that's not what's happening here. All that's happening here is you're just saying anything underneath this image element up to its height, float it to the right side or the left side if you select this other one. Right, let me show you that. And to add a new item underneath an image, I typically just click on the caption, hit enter, and you can see it didn't appear down here. It appeared right here to the right because we have all this height to go before we clear that float, right? So let me paste in some paragraphs and you can see right there, we've reached the ending of our image and now it's able to just continue like normal. Your editor might expect as we add some content in here to wrap around this image, that's not what's gonna happen. It's just gonna keep continuing on and it's never gonna wrap unless it's underneath the image. The really annoying thing about this, and I don't know if this is due to the recent update or what, you can't add spacing here at the moment. So you can see if I add a class here of just like image, no styling, can't style. All image, can't style. The div block, can't style. So you just can't like add spacing here. Before the update you were able to, and now you can't. If you do for some reason need to add more space between these two, add a class to my paragraph, and I say test by going on the left padding, applying a percentage value on here. Let's say 60% of the full width here. And you can see now you can manipulate the space between them. So these are all similar for all of the other tags. A couple other things with this image block, if we open up the settings here, you'll see that there's some additional information in here. You can set your alt text, of course. The size and things are pretty weird because it's very buggy and you can, you can see here, it's like, did they just like not finish developing this or something? So the UI is a little buggy right now. You can control the percentage of the width. As far as linking is concerned, you can only do an external link on the image itself. If you do want to link, let's say, to another page of your site or anything like that, do that in the caption. Because here, cheat, 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 you can highlight this, get the link. Now you have right here that you can click and be able to link to a page. The next thing I want to take a look at is the embed rich content. And this is actually really cool. You can go on Webflow's university's website to see all of the different services that you can embed onto here. This is completely different than embedding like an iframe or something like that. This works similar to videos where all it's looking for is the link on the address bar. I have here a random SoundCloud link. And if I hit that, just the URL again, and now you have this guy. And then here it functions very similar to the image, the same exact styling options. The settings itself is slightly different, of course, than the image. You just see the media source, you can add your title, and then you can manipulate the size. The last thing we can look at are are the list elements here. The list elements functions, if you've ever used, let's just do a bunch, functions exactly the same as Webflow's list element. It literally is a one-to-one -one of it. Similar to how you can't change within the same line, let's say this number three, I can't change that to H1. Our list element, I can't just like highlight this list item and decide to go into ordered list. You need to essentially make sure that you have a completely new block 
that you're inserting in here to be able to do that. Those are kind of the basics and the fundamentals. My next video is gonna go into how to style and apply these things and some really cool use cases for the rich text element. So stick around and watch that. Thanks for watching. Um, I'll catch you on the next one. See ya.